Hey guys, welcome to a new video. This one will be all about the perfect Norway road trip. But before we start, we are Julia, Sven and Felix and we travel all around the world because it's our big passion and in this summer we finally got the chance to visit the beautiful country of Norway and in this week's video we will share all the beautiful places we've been to. We traveled for two weeks only and this was definitely not enough time. If you have more time, plan at least three weeks. But we were still able to cover so many awesome spots and um, that was because we traveled in a camper van. This made it possible to sleep wherever we wanted. Uh, for everyone who doesn't know, in Norway there is the so-called everyman's ride, which means you can basically park wherever you like, unless there's a sign that says you can't. Uh, but this makes it possible to park next to beautiful fjords and yeah, just in, in nature. Having a private car is much better than using public transport in Norway because all those beautiful spots in Norway are in the middle of nature, so basically in the middle of nowhere. That's yeah. why you can't really reach them by train or by bus. We also crossed the whole country from south to north and that's why a car was just amazing because at some point in the north the train tracks for example also just stop. Let's jump right into the main topic and of course first we have to explain how we got to Norway in the first place. So we are from northern Germany and we drove from our home to a place in Denmark called Hürzals. This is all the way in the north and from there we took a ferry to Kristiansand which is in the south of Norway. The ferry costs around 200 euros. It's actually officially not allowed to take your dog with you on board, but everyone still does it. So there were so many dogs when we were there. And the ferry ride itself took around two hours. It was very convenient. After entering Norway and going through customs, we just slept somewhere at a random street because we were super, super tired. By the way, if you want to know how to enter Norway with a dog, because um, the country is not in the European Union, which means it's a bit more difficult, you can check out Felix's latest video where we share um, how to travel Norway with a dog. On our first full day in Norway, we traveled to Kjerakbolten. It's a famous stone stuck between two cliffs. It looks spectacular. And the hike itself was pretty exhausting, but also very, very beautiful. And we can only recommend you to do this as well. Yeah. And if you're crazy enough, you can also jump on the stone. Many people do it. I was way too scared, Felix, as well. But, but I did. This crazy guy went on there. <laughs> After hiking to Kjerakbolten and going all the way back, we slept right next to the hike itself actually so i think it was like one and a half kilometers from the parking space and it was also very beautiful and actually you can just go at any spot there were so many campers right next to the streets but we will mark the exact location at a link down below so you can see all of our sleeping spots for the whole trip yes on the next day we went to the famous Preike stone which is a cliff um, overlooking a fjord. It looks super super nice. The hike itself is rather easy, only takes around one and a half hours maybe, not that steep, many people do it. The parking is expensive. This is basically the case for all the cool hikes you can do in Norway. You usually have to park your car at a public parking and they start from 30 euros going up so sometimes we paid 50 euros for a day it's uh, yeah it's pretty expensive but it's the only way to park for sleeping we used a normal parking that comes with a toilet and shower this is so cool in Norway you can basically just pay a few euros to park there and then you can uh, use the shower and the toilet yeah, for free as well. It comes very handy if you're used to van life and you don't have hot water. So it's very, very nice after a long hike to just have a warm shower. On day four, we drove a very long distance. By the way, we actually did this pretty much every day <laughs> because yeah. the country is so huge. And like we said, we didn't have that much time. But we visited some very nice spots along the way. For example, Latefossen, which is a stunning waterfall and also Bontusvatnet. So it's a crystal clear lake looking beautiful and I think walking there takes around 20 to 30 minutes from the parking space. Super easy. Yeah, and then we slept right there around the corner pretty much because that was a great location to go on the next hike for the next day, which was... Trolltunga. <laughs> okay, so Trolltunga was something I was a bit 
afraid to do because I read everywhere that it's a super difficult hike, it takes very long. So uh, yeah, we started very very early, I think at around 6 or 7 a.m. Yeah, so we started hiking and we had to drive that first. So. We got up at around 5 or something and Please. then we drove for 30 minutes. For Trautunga there are three different parking options on three different levels. So the highest one has the shortest walk. Shortest walk still like 20 kilometers but <laughs> shorter than the other ones which are 28 or, th or something like that I think. Um, but you can only enter the highest parking uh, with a very small car. Yeah, With a normal car but yeah. you also have to pre-book your spot so you can't just drive there and hope that you have a free spot, you have to pre-book it in advance. With our car, with our van that we had, it was just a normal van, not a tall, huge one. We but it was even, too high. It was still too high, we weren't allowed to go there. That's why we parked at parking two, and then we spontaneously took the shuttle going up to the parking number three, which was very, very nice. This was the hardest part of the whole hike. It was just going along the road for eight kilometers straight, Nothing special and we're very lucky to skip that one. We wanted to pre-book this shuttle in advance but it wasn't possible and when we arrived there uh, were only a few people and the guide said like ah oh, you want to take the shuttle and we were like yes <laughs> and uh, I think it was like eight or ten euros per person. And then we did the Trotunga hike. It wasn't hard in terms of hiking up or something like that. It was just a bit difficult because we went in June and there was still a lot of snow that was melting so we almost slipped all the time. The hardest part was the duration of the hike. I think we started at 7 in the morning and ended maybe at 7 in the evening or something like that and uh, yeah he was so tired afterwards we as well so if you have the opportunity bring your tent many people actually do this um, like i said before camping is uh, possible at most places this way you also avoid the crowd because when we arrived there were just way too many people we couldn't really enjoy it would make it much nicer to enjoy the sunrise or the sunset without the crowd around after arriving back at the parking at Trautunga we again had to drive for a few hours to make some distance and we drove to a spot called Stegastein and we also slept there with our van. It was a very beautiful spot overlooking a fjord. Maybe the most beautiful spot on the whole trip. I'm not sure I would say so. Yeah, so if you have the chance just go there. It's it's super amazing. Yeah, you have to be lucky. I think there's only one parking. <laughs> We were lucky. <laughs> but we arrived late, like 8 or 9 p.m. and we were like, yeah. oh, why is no one parking here? Yeah. And along the way we again took a free shower somewhere at the street, a free warm shower. It was very nice after that long hike. In case you don't know how to find these free showers, just use the app park for night On there you have many, many options available. Let's continue with a day six of our road trip, which was I think one of my favorite days. We started at Stegastein where we slept and just enjoyed the view because it's super nice. And afterwards we drove a few hours and had a picnic at a beautiful little cabin next to a fjord. We will also link it down below like all the locations we mentioned here. And uh, then we drove a bit more to reach a ferry port. I, I think we haven't mentioned this one yet but in Norway the roads often just stop because because a fjord is there <laughs> so you basically have to take a ferry but most ferries operate like every hour several times every hour, mm -hmm. every hour something like that and um, it's super cheap like uh, 8 to 10 euros and you can just stay in your car because it's very fast and then we reached the ferry port to get to Christian Gard where we wanted to go the next morning we already missed our ferry that evening so we had to wait for the next one uh, in the morning and just slept there at the ferry harbor and it was amazing as always. <laughs> On the next day we catch the ferry early in the morning to get to Christiangard. I think it's some kind of a restaurant or something and it was very special because there is the most beautiful swing in the world and it was very beautiful. Yeah, it looks like you're swing swinging over a fjord uh, into the clouds. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> you're flying. We didn't stay long there so we took the ferry back to the other side of the fjord and drove for a few hours and along the way we saw many beautiful flowers i think they're called lupines and very colorful and beautiful we took some photos with them 
also Felix of course. <laughs> and then we went to a place called Strün and it, this one is famous for a amazing river which looks like a snake. <laughs> It's so cool, but you need to have a drone yeah. to, to actually see it. So we flew the drone and we're just like, wow, is this even real? It looks very, very nice, kind of like, like Lord of the Rings or something like that. Very, very picturesque. And from this point, we drove to another spot, which is very famous in Norway. I think the most famous fjord in Norway. It because called... it's supposed to be the most beautiful fjord yeah, in I the think world. It, I think it is also. Yeah. So it's called Geiranga Fjord. And then we just stayed at a very beautiful viewpoint, seeing just overlooking the whole fjord. And from there, we drove down into town to a campground, which was massive. I don't know, it was like kind Hundreds. of like the whole place itself, yeah. like the whole village, Gairanga, was actually this camping spot. Yeah, and they had hundreds of spots where you could park and most of them were already taken. There were so many camper vans. I've, yeah. I've never seen so many camper vans in my life before. So just for your information, Gairanga is, I think, one of the most beautiful places that you can see in Norway and there are several viewpoints to go to. So on the first evening we went to a higher one where you can just go with your car. It's very convenient and um, easy to stop there. And after sleeping we started a little hike the next morning to reach another viewpoint. It's called Westerasfjellet and the cool thing is that you basically park at a farm and from there you have to um, cross like uh, yeah, the an, farm itself pretty much <laughs> yeah an area where they have all their animals um, goats and alpacas yeah. llamas. llamas it was so cool Felix was so bamboozled and they were also pretty shocked of him <laughs> I guess <laughs> later on we had another special activity planned which was taking a speedboat to the famous farm of Skageflor. So sorry if we don't pronounce uh, mm. all the places correctly, but yeah, <laughs> we are trying very hard. And uh, this speedboat ride was very bumpy. Uh, I think it was like 80 euros, uh, two ways for the three of us, um, but it's so worth it because this way we saved a lot of time um, for hiking. And once we reached the spot uh, where we could go to the farm, we had to hike a bit up and then we had the most beautiful view on some waterfalls and on this nice farm. Still on the same day, the next spot on the list was Strollstigen, which is a zigzag road in the mountains. It suddenly was freezing cold, but it's very worth it to go there. They have some nice places to walk around. And later on, we also made it to the Atlantic Ocean Road, which is one of the most beautiful roads in the world. It looks so nice. It goes from one small island to the next one in the middle of the ocean. And again, we had to cover some distance. So we drove for a few more hours and just slept in a forest in the middle of nowhere, nothing special, but we were just tired. The following day was a complete driving day. So we drove, I think for nine hours straight, we crossed the Arctic Circle at that day. And then we arrived at a town called Bode, which is the port going to the Lofoten Islands and we slept at some gas station or something, nothing special. And from Bode, we wanted to take the ferry to the Lofoten Islands and we didn't have any ticket. We cannot recommend you to do that. So if you have the chance, you should book your ticket in advance. I know that it is very difficult to get a ticket in advance because there are, there's just a limited number. And when you don't have a ticket, it is a first come first serve policy. So if you come late and you see there is a huge line of cars already waiting for the ferry, maybe you are not allowed to enter the ferry because it's just full. We were lucky because we slept there and we drove to the ferry very early in the morning. So we were, I think the first or the second car in line. But uh, if you have the chance, book it in advance so you don't have any stress. On the next morning, the ferry to the Lofoten Islands left super early, I think around 5 a.m. And after we arrived, we were very tired because we didn't sleep much in the night. We were so stressed to, <laughs> to catch this ferry because there are only two or three each day. We basically just visited Rheine, one of the biggest towns on the Lofoten Islands and slept the whole afternoon. The first night on the Lofoten Islands, we slept at a camping space again. Actually, 
two nights in a row. Yeah, two nights in a row because we were just so tired and we had to do some work in the second day. But after sleeping a long time and recharging our batteries, we then went on some hikes on the Lofoten Islands, which we can just recommend you to do as well because the landscape is just unreal. It's so beautiful. So the first hike we did was Kvalvika Beach. I think for me personally it was my favorite hike because it just looks so beautiful and the goal when you reach it is just stunning. You have the open ocean and this beautiful beach down there. The hike itself wasn't that hard and the scenery changed all the time which was uh really nice because often you just hike and hike and everything looks the same and uh, just the finish point is nice but the hike itself is not that nice. Felix wants to have his own video, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess. And I think the hike takes around one hour and from that spot we drove to Rheine again to do the Rheine Bringen hike which <laughs> is like a, a mountain right on top of the village and you can see all those beautiful little islands down there from Rheine and all the neighboring villages, it looks just stunning. I think this is like the picture you get when you think of Little Foden, this spot. But the hike itself is not so nice, we have to say. It's basically just steps yeah, going very steep up steps, yeah. um, and if you have knee problems, no, 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 don't do it. From that spot we went to another very beautiful beach called Hauklandstranda. From there we went to another town called Henningswehr. This place is famous for this football pitch. It just looks stunning when you have a drone as well. So from down on the ground it's nothing special pretty much, but when you fly the drone you can see all those beautiful islands and the football pitch itself is like carved into one of those islands. It's amazing. On the next day we did our last hike on the Lofoten Islands, which was Matint and also one of my favorites. The hike itself was rather easy and in the end we reached some cliffs um, and it looked unreal, I would say. Yeah, it was very nice. This is the spot, by the way, where those puffins live. So <laughs> if you are very, very, very lucky, you might see a puffin when you visit this place in summer. That evening we took a ferry to leave the Lofoten Islands to go to Senja and there we just slept next to a tunnel near to a fjord as always. That sleeping spot was very practical because it was close to our last hike of the whole trip uh, which was Segla and we kind of messed this one up because we, I don't know, we just took a wrong turn at some point and we accidentally arrived at the wrong mountain. We actually wanted to go on the other mountain to see the mountain where we, where we ended up on so and the hike was so yeah. hard in the end we were kind of sad because it was just so exhausting and we didn't even reach the point we wanted to in the first place but luckily we had our drone with us so we were still able to see the mountain with us standing on top of it so that was something then we left Norway and we drove for a few hours to enter Sweden along the way we saw a reindeer by the way that was crazy right a wild reindeer yeah Felix first yeah. reindeer ever yeah <laughs> so now it's a reindeer heard us so yeah he he loved it and there we slept at a very Swedish camping spot you could say it was just in the middle of nowhere somewhere at the lake with lots of mosquitoes and it was still very beautiful though but we couldn't go out because we were almost eaten alive. Yeah. <laughs> and from now on we basically just went all the way back because our time period for the trip was almost over. We basically crossed most of Sweden within one day. I think we drove for 12 hours or something like that. And in the evening we reached Stockholm and slept in a hotel to be able to go out very early in the morning to see a little bit at least of the town. Well that's what we did in the following day and from there we drove a few more hours to visit Copenhagen. We did pretty much the same thing there so we arrived in the evening, slept there and on the next day we just walked around the city a little bit, saw some spots. Of course we should have spent more time there but it was just not possible for us at that time and from there we then drove a few more hours to reach our last ferry going from Denmark to Germany and yeah then we returned our camping van and drove back home that's it as I said before please plan more time for the trip we almost rushed and the hiking was pretty exhausting so after a few days we were like oh another hike but we really wanted to cover everything on our itinerary and now we will just share a few more tips with you the first one is to bring your own food if possible or for your dog if you have a dog um, to avoid 
going out very often to uh, to restaurants or uh, to the grocery store because you can spend some money in Norway. <laughs> And if you're staying in Airbnbs, for example, or in a camper van, you can just cook your own meals and yeah, save some money. The next tip is about your clothes. So definitely pack some warm clothes, even though you would visit in summer. So we were there in June and it was very cold at some days. And of course, Norway is also kind of famous for not the best weather. So if you're there like in July or in August, it could rain and it could get very, very cold. So pack some warm clothes whenever you visit. But overall, I think the best time to visit is during summer. You just have to be lucky. We were super lucky within two weeks. We only had one day of rain. On that day, it was so cold. And then when you stay in a van, it's not so nice. The other days we were, we were lucky, I guess. But another famous time to visit Norway is in winter, actually from I think October until January, February, when it's super dark, you can see the Northern Lights if you go higher than the Arctic Circle. And we, we've done that in Finland before. We were lucky to experience the Northern Lights and it was really special. We can highly recommend it. But if you go in winter, most of the hikes that we mentioned in this video are not possible to do because there's just way too much snow and it's way too dangerous. Talking about dangerous things, don't go too close to the edge of all those beautiful spots when, when you go hiking, for example, at Prekestol. I mean, it looks beautiful, but it is very dangerous and it goes steep down like straight down maybe for 800 meters or something it's crazy yeah. and there are no barriers or anything so if you slip <laughs> don't slip <laughs> okay so the norwegians they want to preserve the nature as much as possible that's why they don't build any fences or barriers and that's why it also looks stunning and beautiful but that's why it's also a bit dangerous so just keep your distance to the edge of all those nice spots Felix is super tired already and happy probably that the video is over now. We really hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let us know if you have more questions. We will try to answer them. Anything else? Just make sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our future uploads, of course. And I think that's it. We'll see you again next week. Yeah, we got better with saying goodbye. <laughs> I remember some old videos where we always messed this part up. <laughs> okay, thanks so much for watching. See you next week. Ciao, ciao. Bye -bye.